The Mountain is Calling. A Poetry Collection. Written. By. Dr. K. V. Ragupathy. The mountain has its wisdom. None recognizes it. Its wisdom is its stillness and silence. It receives rain and light and gives back in the form of trees for birds and animals to dwell. It never grows and never dies. It is ageless. Ancient and primitive. It sits in deep meditation and its meditation is its own fullness, non-transmittable. Only to those who go near shall feel its profundity. It sheds leaves in summer and gains freshness in monsoon, it looks brown in summer and green in monsoon. Its balance is its steadiness, its strength is its eternal calmness. So green, so soft. So fragrant that this mountain is that every night it closes. It knows how countless creatures are secure. Each morning it opens with freshness of birds' songs. It doesn't say, I am giving, but it shares. It never complains when its chest is gone dry. On the other, it does not lose its tenderness. The mountain is a mountain, it never dries nor dies though the trees die, flowers wither. It is Tidhar Prajnur. The mountain has something to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. It's not the knowledge of the world. But it is something else. That you cannot grasp mundanely. Don't go back to sleep. The mountain's doors are open forever. Come and savor its wisdom. The mountain has something to tell you. Its sunlit river like Vadanam. Flowing majestically. With its mystical mean glowing like a sage. The mountain has something to tell you. Come and relish before you go back to sleep. 1. The mountain is calling. Rivers that compete for meaning with the ocean. Do not know what the ocean is. The ocean is simply what it is. It knows nothing, except it is what it is. It is simply water, nothing else. Water, water, water everywhere. Rivers can never compete for its meaning nor dry it. 2. The mountain is calling. As bees flit from flower to flower. I say, I know not. As birds crisscross in patterns. You say, I know. As butterflies flip through. They say, we are unsure. While you, they and I are louts. The moon dances in the dirty pond. 3. The mountain is calling. The bird flies, knows not wind. The fish swims, knows not water. The flower blooms, knows not light. The leaf falls, knows not root. You do everything while knowing. You know everything while doing. The moon is hanging, not in water. 4. The mountain is calling. Samadhi is perfect balance. Deep involvement is action. It is thinking and no action. It is action, and no thinking. The sun is shining, and not drinking. The moon is reflecting, and not eating. It is perfection in imperfect balance. It is imperfection in perfect balance. 5. The mountain is calling. If you just can't see what you are. Look at trees in autumn. Leaves are falling, falling, falling. If you just can't see what you are not. Look at the flowering plants in spring. Flowers are blooming, blooming, blooming. If you just see neither what you are nor what you are not. Look at the falling rain in the end summer. Filling, filling, filling the rivers and mountains. 6. The mountain is calling. There is nothing like moksha. Shit, there is no moksha. While you sit, why dance? While you walk, why run? While you run, why stand? Moksha is doing everything in nothing. 7. The mountain is calling. Suchness is not thinking. Thinking is not suchness. Suchness is is. Thinking is like a boiling egg. Stop it, there are no ripples in the boiling. There is water only in suchness. 8. The mountain is calling. The bird flies, knows not wind. The fish swims, knows not water. The flower blooms, knows not light. The leaf falls, knows not root. 
You do everything while knowing. You know everything while doing. The moon is hanging, not in water. 9. The mountain is calling. When the ideas of self-power die. When all the images of mirror erase. When all the impressions reflected in pond perish. You are what you are. That is your real being. The sun never moves, but shines. Nothing moves in the sky, because there is no sky. X. The mountain is calling. The master looks at his servant. The servant looks at his master. The master is the servant, the servant the master. The reflected evening star. And the reflected morning star. Are the same. Only you and they and we are different. 11. The mountain is calling. Over the mountain the sun shines. The river down flows mellifluously. The green grass sways in ecstasy. The birds frolic in empty space. For whom? Why? Why? For whom? 12. The mountain is calling. When the birds from the south land. When the land recedes not in rain. When the sky is no sky. But yields space for multitude milky ways. There sits Iogi under the people. Who says, I know not why. 13. The mountain is calling. Painting by painting is no painting. Art is only a reflection of the bending bow over the moving river. The Siberian crane far is only a flick. Nothing ever remains, nothing ever moves. There is no God says a lunatic. There is but God says another lunatic. 14. The mountain is calling. We eat, fuck, sleep and die. The eclipse happens once a while. The tree sheds, the black clouds rain. The sun hides, the moon appears. But yoga dharma happens only once. And it is never. 15. The mountain is calling. A mind searches. The eagle simply flies. There is no greed in the cat. The rat is safe in the hole. The eagle simply flies in the space. Not knowing its emptiness. 16. The mountain is calling. Death is nowhere to go. Life is everywhere to go. Prudence is the mother of living. Living is the father of prudence. There is prudence only. Prudence is seeing suchness in things. And no suchness in living. 17. The mountain is calling. Order is Maya as much as disorder. Science locates symmetry in disorder. Nature is order in disorder, disorder in order. Art gathers, science dissipates. The universe breaks down when you order. Beauty lies in gurgling water. In stillness gathers moss. 18. The mountain is calling. The wild geese have no mind to create their own shadows. It is the sun that plays havoc. Reflection or no reflection, it is creation. Plainness is as much a mystery as crookedness. At least your shadow is with you if none is with you. 19. The mountain is calling. When speech and silence are incompatible. I hear the pattering rain. I see sunlit pigeons flitting. I smell rose petals in a temple. I feel the stillness of leaves. Yet I hunger for nothing. 20. The mountain is calling. There is only poetry, it is wordless. Living in silence is excruciating. Noise is the beauty of mind. Million words spilled from the pen. It is poetry of sound. There is only poetry, but it is in the falling leaf. 21. The mountain is calling. The river darkens in the night sky. But the moon shines. Where are the birds to play? In silence the withered leaves fall. The wind takes away the sound. In birdless dark sky. My consciousness shrinks like a flower. 22. The mountain is calling. No one lives around. Silence reigns supreme. Such is the suchness. The two-foot child gathers pebbles. And creates meaningful patterns for her. There is no male counterpart. The gulls are still flying over the moonlit sea. 
23. The mountain is calling. There is no stream, but water hides in the grass. How can rain beat water? When there are no black clouds. Black ducks are invisible. But small ripples touch the roots. The grass is still. How can rain beat stillness? When there are no black clouds. 24. The mountain is calling. The dewdrop life is hanging. From the tip of a people leaf. Below, the fallen leaves are gathering. The morning sun brightens. The dewdrop life is hanging. Yet, yet, yet. 25. The mountain is calling. There is nothing outside of your life. Neither. Buddha nor yogi. The river is simple. Only in rain it is boisterous. The sky is clear. Only in rain, clouds gather. The desert is clam. Only in storm, sand dunes form. 26. The mountain is calling. To be conscious of the original mind. Is to see and experience no mind. Only the bark is hard. Inside it is soft. The hard is to protect the soft. Hence the tree stands majestically on the surface. 27. The mountain is calling. Entering the forest is entering into silence. It is different from city silence. When the temple bells toll. Prayer is enlivened. When the temple bells cease. Meditation happens. 28. The mountain is calling. A cloud in the sky. And water in the pitcher. Is the same. There is neither Iwa nor Para. But only Atmar it is fleecy and always evaporates. 29. To the mountain is calling. To save death, life must be destroyed. To save life, death must be destroyed. The two can never co-inhabit. In bloom there is no bud. In bud we need to await bloom. 30. The mountain is calling. Clinging to oneself is like having a thorn in the soul. You can never move. Though the desire persists. In floods, if you want to reach the shore. You need to swim. There is no other way. Yoga Dharma happens to those who sail alone. 31. The mountain is calling. While peeling potatoes. You don't bleed. Bleeding is not no thought action. The dog sleeps, yet it is conscious. The snake slithers, yet the rat is saved. 32. The mountain is calling. Spirituality is action in inaction. And inaction in action. The bud unfurls. But the plant doesn't bleed. The roots are strong. Because the earth is not slushy. 33. The mountain is calling. Conscious thought is conscious action. Unconscious thought therefore is unconscious action. Logic is virulent and painful. Spontaneity is painless. The kingfisher swoops. Only when the prey is noticed. 34. The mountain is calling. Journey without purpose is yoga dharma. It is divine and absolute. It is going straight without stopping. Even though the tree has numerous leaves. It sheds only those unwanted. The water in the river recedes. Only when the rains stop. 35. The mountain is calling. If you don't trust. Just look at the rain drops. Dripping drip, drip, drip drop. How else can it be explained? In reasoning there is no beauty. Only watching with no thought is yoga dharma. 36. The mountain is calling. To see the world without categories. And categories without world. Undivided, singular, distinct. Is seeing the reality in life. What does the fox know when it is hunting? 37. The mountain is calling. You are already a yogi. That is, when you were a tender baby. Begin your life with this realization. That is prajna, the awakened knowledge. In the world of birth and death. The dog, cat and rat are yogins. Every other creature too. 38. The mountain is calling. Everything is karma. 
You're seeking to become a yogi. You're reciting hymns. You're reading of scriptures. You're performing rituals. All is caught in karma. Does this bee have karma? 39. The mountain is calling, this moment. When the sun is dipping down behind the hill. When the elongated shadow is shrinking, this moment. When the birds are nesting back. When the flowers are down with dying. This moment. When the sky is turning mauve and purple. When the stars are stepping in the darkening sky. I forgot all my knowledge. I manifest the primordial beauty. Excel. The mountain is calling. The blue expansive sky without borders. Ever profound and clear. With no speck of cloud here. When you try to seek, it is empty. When you try to hold, it is empty. When you try to create a poem, it is empty. When you try to be yogi, it is empty. When you try to get it, it is empty. When you are silent, it speaks. When you speak of it, it is silent. XLI. The mountain is calling. The ordinary mind is no mind. It is Kaivalya. Therefore, to seek meaning in this state. Is to welcome misery. The vast expanse sky is open to bestow dharma. But everyone is blocking the way. 42. The mountain is calling. What then are you going to achieve? By attaining samadhi? Karma without karunu is meaningless. Dharma without data is useless. Tapas without santosha is nonsensical. Prajna without dhamyatu is insignificant. 43. The mountain is calling. Seeing without seeing. Thinking without thinking. Acting without acting. Seeking without seeking. Are the values of living. There is no seer in the hawk's seeking. There is no killer in the lioness's killing. 44. The mountain is calling. The world is full of mixed realities. You cannot know love. Because it is only hatred. You cannot know non-violence. Because it is only violence. You cannot know truth. Because it is only falsehood. You cannot know moksha. Because it is only indulgence. 45. The mountain is calling. Sitting quietly, not doing anything. Is dharma of my nature. When there is nothing. Sitting quietly, but doing everything. Is a dharma of my nature. When there is nothing. The summer comes and goes. The rains too. 46 The mountain is calling. If you don't understand. Sit quietly like a caterpillar on a leaf. If you understand. Do not dance and fall. But, understanding is learning. Like a tree that drops the faded leaves. 47. The mountain is calling. In the rain you can only scoop the water. In the muddy water you cannot seek the sun. The sun behind the clouds is like a flower hiding in the bud. Aspirations are like sailing bubbles. Where are the children building houses on the sand? The cattle egret simply waits for a cow to ride on her back. Reflected sun is not your essence. 48. The mountain is calling. From the water the fish makes its life. From the sky the bird makes its life. From the light the tree makes its life. From the wind the grass makes its life. The fish departs when the water ends. The bird dies if ever it flies beyond. The tree fades when the light drifts. The grass shrinks if ever the wind stops. Such is life in contradictions. Make sure you watch them grow. As the morning glory glows. 49. The mountain is calling. There is enlightenment when the bud blooms. Your life begins when there is nothing further to seek. Neither self-improvement nor becoming a yogi. You are the essence of living. The bee sucks honey only when the bud unfurls. The flower dies only when the bee sucks. L. The mountain is calling. The cypress tree said, I am not trying. But I am growing. There is no yoga dharma. But I am growing. Whereas he says, I am trying and growing. There is no yoga dharma. What is this contradiction? 
Lee. The mountain is calling. The pond has no mind to stock the reflections. Because water is transparent. But the dog has partial mind to store your memory. Truth is like that, both transparent and translucent. If you are dare enough. Slash shit into pieces. Umpteen yogis emerge. 52. The mountain is calling. Painting by painting is no painting at all because it is only painting. How can form be integrated with emptiness? As long as mind treads. Emptiness is a form for you. There is no emptiness. 53. The mountain is calling. Flying birds do not intend to cast their shadows on the earth. Because the medium is the sun. While for you in spite of the absence of the sun. You cast imprints upon humanity. How can there be a shadow upon a shadow? How can there be a light upon a light? We live in a nonsensical world of our own. Live. The mountain is calling. I will show you something strange. A snowball never melts in the wind. It is quizzical that everybody thinks. Thoughts evaporate in the sunlight. You light the fire before the sun. The sun burns much brighter than the fire. Yoga Dharma happens when the sun shines in you. LV. The mountain is calling. Whatever runs counter is your reflection. Yogi is not in the reflection. Yoga Dharma happens when all reflections die. Being ordinary means simply human. Being extraordinary is simply inhuman. How can the sun brighten emptiness? It has no form and mind. LVI. The mountain is calling. Life is fleeting as lightning. When you think it not. You see nothing. It is already gone. You as you are no more. How blissful if yoga dharma happens. Before you see the lightning. 57. The mountain is calling. The long night, painful night. The long day, painless day. Both are one and the same. Yoga Dharma never happens. As long as the duality persists. The sound of moving river says. I am moving in the right direction. 58. The mountain is calling. The stars on the still water. Are like pearls sparkling. Winter comes and goes. The stars on the still water. Are like precious stones shining in a necklace. The stars are stars, pearls are pearls. Both can never merge in the still water. Licks. The mountain is calling. Your life and my life. Are like a parrot perching on the edge of a withered leaf. Either the leaf should fall. Or the parrot fly. Thought the withered leaf falls. You are flitting like a butterfly. Landing on another withered leaf. LX. The mountain is calling. In the deep, dark forest. The drop of a leaf is heard. It is the sound merging with the silence. With the weakening evening breeze. The sky falls, over ripened sun slid behind the hill. Loneliness is deep, fathomless, infinite. LXI. The mountain is calling. At least the woodpecker knows. The sun is waning. So, it stops burrowing on the same place. Nevertheless, the tree is strong. The hole cannot make the roots weak. Neither the harsh winter. Birds are walking on its branches. As snakes are crawling. 62. The mountain is calling. Who said life is desolate? The wooden house is crumbling in the surging waters. Life floats as the autumn wind stops. Thinking of the past things. Is like playing flute. When the torrential rain beats on the broken wooden house. 63. The mountain is calling. The bright moon is on the falling water shining. Consciousness is like evening haze. Hiding in the thick of trees. Content is a sitting bird on a branch. Which can never break. So the bird is safe, only. The consciousness is like morning mist. Hanging over the bluff. 64. The mountain is calling. The long day. The sound of the restless birds. The short night. 
Again the sound of the restless birds. Human mind does not distinguish. It always barks. The long night. And the short day. It marks no difference. The sound of the water is the same. 65. The mountain is calling. The river darkens. The voices of the birds are falling, the moon ball is blowing. Leaving nothing behind. The sage-like silence. In the dense darkness. What is being seen is my being. Between the sailing moon. And the static stars. There is not a single star visible. It is my being, my consciousness. 66. The mountain is calling. Wind has subsided. Like the soda water froth. Flowers are falling. Like the unwanted husk. But the birds are still having fun. Over nothing. Silence deepens, deepens like the black hole. Making the sky birdless. The monk feels sorry. For not creating enough space within. 67. The mountain is calling. The thief looted everything. Except the half-baked moon on the window sill. The wind has swept everything. Except silence on birds' wings. The rain has washed everything. Except misery on the empty land. The monk feels sorry for failing to see contradictions. 68. The mountain is calling. If your past is as intoxicating as wine. The present is overflowing tea in a cup. Yoga Dharma never happens. Until the cup is empty. The rocks create their own art in desolation. How else can I miss? 69. The mountain is calling. All trying is psychological. The river makes her way with no mind. Distant birds create their own land. When the sky is cloudless. Who else can miss its beauty? Only fools make wise out of themselves. The wise is always wise. 70. The mountain is calling. Know then the truth. The fallen leaf can hardly lift itself. The reflected moon can hardly make itself a reality. Consciousness alone remains. All else are fleeting bubbles. There is no fox in cunningness. Nor cunningness in fox. There is only fox. 71. The mountain is calling. How indistinct, how blurred. Yet distinct and clear. Within mental power. Quick perception is an effortless action. Between the seed and its growth. There is not a thin layer. 72. The mountain is calling. All yoga dharma flows everywhere. There is neither prakriti nor purusha. It is oneness in indistinctness. It nourishes all. But does not overlord. The sheer inconceivability is metaphorical darkness. 73. The mountain is calling. The perfect man. Grasps nothing. Receives nothing. Refuses nothing. Holds nothing. He is a mirror without reflection. He is a sky with no clouds. 74. The mountain is calling. Body like a dry leaf. Mind like a sapless seed dash. This is true knowledge. Seeking it is anguish. Not seeking it also is pain. Hence, in darkness and obscurity. You and I are condemned. What kind of life it is. 75. The mountain is calling. The Jnanedras will blind your sight. The Karmendras will bind your clarity. Chasing and hunting will make you wild. Therefore, the sage makes prescription. For body and mind to still over the rustling bond. While the physician's is only for body. Things hard need to be devitalized. 76. The mountain is calling. There is no mission in the ocean. The water goes nowhere from there. And governs nothing beyond. It is the ultimate, the final. The mystique lies in holding. When gulls cannot drink a drop. Humans can hardly predict the events. 77. The mountain is calling. Insight is indivisible. Neither intermaterial nor spiritual. So, the deepest experience. 
is neither self-centered nor selfishness. He who sleeps on the cot will fall out of bed. He who sleeps on the floor comes to himself to be whole. 78. The mountain is calling not to understand things such as they are being problematic. To understand things such as they are being unproblematic. The eagle never feels sorry because it cannot walk like humans. Nor humans can feel sorry because they cannot soar like the eagle. All things from the beginning are as they are. Altering the condition is misery. 79. The mountain is calling. Action by thinking is painful. Whereas action by intelligence is painless. For it is spontaneous, natural and effortless. You are like a leaf in stream. That is all, know then the truth. Neither the leaf nor the stream. Knows each other. The cock sings, while the hen submits. 80 The mountain is calling. Awakening is not by seeking dash. There is coercion, effort, energy loss. There is authority, structure, following. There is ruling, submission, unyielding. There is no vision in the rivers joining the ocean. What do the gulls know? Except play over the water? 81. The mountain is calling. If you don't know how to get it, then kill it, the killer disappears. You cannot be right without being wrong. Without being wrong you cannot be right. By blending both right and wrong, you can understand the principles of universe. 82. The mountain is calling. Release from world is enlightenment, they say. Nay, getting into world is enlightenment, some say. Neither world nor enlightenment, but simply movement. In the landscape trees grow naturally. While birds make free mating. 83. The mountain is calling. Being aware of awareness in motion is pure awareness. Being aware of pure awareness is pure consciousness. From consciousness is I am Ness dash. The witness consciousness of awareness in motion. The dying tiger does not know it is dying. Because it knows nothing about death. 84. The mountain is calling. Bondage is conceptual before it is a reality. So also release from it is an illusion. Neither bondage nor liberation dash. Only isness remains. Like the lonely sailing leaf in the rain water. The non-conceptual man lives. 85. The mountain is calling. By hearing Dharma, it is never realized. By reading Dharma, it is never attained. By imitating someone, it is never fructified. By living in Dharma, duality is erased. The sky is pregnant with swollen clouds. It may or may not rain. 86. The mountain is calling. Mind is unborn, when nothing is sought. When everything is sought, Dharma is lost. All escape into landscape is a search for the primordial. The unborn, the unpremeditated. That which exists always is an object. Void never exists, it is never an object. The tree with its twisted branches and leaves. Is an insignia on the desert. 87. The mountain is calling. Stinking mind conceptualizes things. True happiness lies in non-conceptualization. The actuality is simply nameless which is soundless. In the wordless nothingness. In the soundless nothingness. Isisness. 88. The mountain is calling. Experience is neither factual nor biological. Without me. It is simply impersonal. Yoga Dharma never happens with me. With me is subject-object relationship. It is raining, the earth is sucking. There are no clouds, the sky is stainless. 89. The mountain is calling. All poetry is mind-centered. Hence, complaining, protesting, chaotic and unrhythmical. In the tossing of leaves. In the swinging of flowers. In the running of runnels. Why make another poetry? XC. The mountain is calling. 
The void is neither created nor eliminated. The void exists, but does not exist. It is simply isness. There is no way to seek. It is not yogahood, it is mindhood. In the sunless setting, there is no falsification. In the starless night, there is not deception. In the moonless night, there is no illusion. XCI. The mountain is calling. All learning through conceptualization is like pickling in jars. Thousand Buddhas with learning have not found the way. The trees have not found the way as to how to grow in emptiness. Neither have they learnt as to how to deepen their roots in the earth. The cubs are on their own. When the lioness is on hunting. 92. The mountain is calling. Far from being what happens. It is yoga dharma that matters. If reading is personal. Understanding is impersonal. If studying is impersonal. Understanding is personal. Remember the roots and not the surface. 93. The mountain is calling. The spirit of living is in growing and dying. The tree grows, we say. Similarly, the universe is expanding. And not shrinking like the river water in midsummer. Yoga Dharma never happens in shrinking. It blossoms in even understanding of the self. 94. The mountain is calling. Yoga Dharma is not something what happens. It is something what you are, what is. No thing is happening, but happens. Balance is creation, creation is balance. Balancing is what is happening. It is your creation, my creation. The tree balances itself against space not the other way. The stem with the roots, the boughs with the stem. Leaves with the branches, the flowers with the leaves. Yogadharma is not something what is happening. It is, what it is. 95. The mountain is calling. The water has no mind to reflect your images. Yet it reflects in the cool shade of trees. As the rain drops fall, it dimples, dimples, dimples. The wild geese sail along with their shadow images. The grass humbles under the mighty feet of elephants. It has no grief as they pass. But the mighty elephants grieve. As small thorns prick their feet. Yoga Dharma is simply accepting the paradoxes. 96. The mountain is calling. A mind that constantly searching for happiness. Is centered in its own foolishness. Like the dog chasing its own tail. Myself is like haystacks. In nature non-existent, nowhere to go. Nothing happens, nowhere to go, when dead. No mind is like unharvested green fields. On which no green carpet is required. 97. The mountain is calling. Two hands make a sound. That is knowledge making noise like twittering birds. Wisdom is like clapping in a single hand. It is no sound, no sound is lucid transparent water. In dead winter birds are silent. In buoyant spring birds are noisy. Celebrating the bloom, grieving over nothing. Yoga Dharma is simply like this unorchestrated phenomenon. 98. The mountain is calling. The sea darkens over the city. The voices of wild ducks have fallen silent. The moon rises because the sun is the other side. The earth snuggles as the cool shine passes. Yoga Dharma says, you are neither a master nor a servant. But a simple traveler. With palms like a bowl. Eyes like an empty cistern. Ears like a lengthening tunnel. 99. The mountain is calling. The cook whose voice fell like a leaf on the water. Leaving nothing behind. In the dense mist. Images are mystified, dogmatized. This dewdrop world is a mirror. As the sun brightens the mirror turns to a plain landscape. Nothing remains in autumn wind. See. The mountain is calling. The thief has carried no moon while leaving. But the autumn wind has brought him dead leaves. To make enough fire for boiling water. You're quoting scriptures like dogs pissing at dustbin. The fish leaps in the silence of moving clouds. 
The wind subsides, but the flowers are in full bloom. The mountain in silence deepens. Birds are grieving. But the mountain in silence intensifies. Here sleep proves to be as elusive as a piece of cloud. I decide to skip my siesta and revel in the soothing embrace of the mountain. I set on the flower embroidered trees and soak in the silence of the mountain which ripples like blue waves to blend with the snow-capped peaks of the mighty Himalayas. A thin veil of my consciousness hangs over the scattered farmhouses dotted on the terraced fields that drape the valley. The sense of all-encompassing silence has silenced all my dimpling thoughts. Silence reigns supreme at that hour. The hour of supreme silence, the hour of mysterious silence, the hour of unrumpled silence. The hour of silence like the unlit temple in the ruins, the hour of cosmic silence in the beginning of beginninglessness. Cuddled in that spellbinding silence. I am humbled like a rat. Before an elephant. The majestic mountain is calling has thinned like a wafer and vanished like wisps of smoke that rose from the chimneys in distance. About the poet. K.V. Raghupathy. A Ph.D. holder in English literature. Writes in English. He is a poet. Short story writer, novelist, book reviewer and critic. An Indian author best known for his poetry in English language. His poetry is rooted in the abundance of philosophy, nature, transcendentalism, imagery, and social perspectives, and replete with similes, metaphors, personifications, apostrophe, irony, climax, anti-climax and full of rhetoric and symbols. More often he takes the readers on the spiritual exploration of radical philosophical thoughts which strongly speak through all the collections. He is currently teaching at Central University of Tamil Nadu. Thiravaru. His other passions include classical Carnatic music and yoga. He began writing seriously in 1985. Since then he has published 11 books in English verse. Two novels, and two collections of short stories. His poems and short stories have appeared in various newspapers like the Hindu, the Statesman, print journals and online journals. He is a recipient of several awards that include Michael Madsud and Dutt's Award. Cole Carter in 2001, H.D. Thoreau Fellowship, Dvanya Loka. Mysur in 2000, the best chosen poet for 2003. Poetry Society of India, New Delhi Poetry Chain, Mumbai, Lifetime Achievement Award. Chennai Poetry Circle, Chennai in 2010. And Rock Pebbles National Award for Creativity, 2014. Bhubaneshwar and Fraser King Arbin Chaudhry National Award for Poetry. Mahatma Gandhi Education and Welfare Society. Parbani, Maharashtra, and two awards in yoga, Best Yogic Publication of the Year Award, 2018. And Lifetime Achievement Award in Yoga, 2018. New Delhi. End of the book. Thank you.